Hello, welcome back. Back in the world of cycling again. I bounce back and forth. So um, this is the Ronde de Flandern or Tour of Flanders. Uh, quite a wonderful race. Been a while, Bon. It's been a while. Been some crashes, been some all kinds of carrying on. But uh, it's the thing with the streaming services, though. <laughs> they show you the whole race. So trying to get to the right point here. So now we're into the final 94 kilometers. We've got one big group. Well, there's two groups up the road. And then this, these two... Obviously, you can only see one right now, are going after them. And this race features a lot of cobbled climbs, cobblestones, pave, if you want to use the French. But um, this particular climb get where we are the Bindaries are is uh, regular pavement but this is Quasnefo Quasnefoi who I've painted many times in the past shoot the whole reason I s <laughs> oh well I kept backing up to get this particular moment with the guy with the uh, flag of Flanders and then here I am painting this in such a way that the fans on this side of the road don't show up <laughs> oh well it is what it is and that's one of the things um, I actually was talking this with someone while I was at work last night is that you're seeing this from start to finish so you've noticed that um there's no preliminary sketching. And I'm using a permanent pen, the Sharpie. So if I make a mistake, I have two choices. Make that mistake not be a mistake, or throw away the piece of paper and start again. And not only is that true of the, um, well, so here, look, I got the flag in after all. <laughs> not only is that true of this part of the process, the um, the ink sketch, the Sharpie sketch, but also, you know, when you get to the watercolors, if, um, you make a mistake there, you're not fixing that either. Oops. The thing with these verticals, and I know I've talked about it before, I used to never do them. Um, when I did a book, of course, it was easier for the um, layout that if, all, if they were all horizontal. So in this painting, I'm already breaking two of my erstwhile rule, rules, which were no helicopter shots. Not altogether sure why I made that a rule. Actually, what it was is I had a possible opportunity to actually go and do this at the uh, Giro d'Italia. It didn't come about, but one of the things I was advocating, foolishly advocating, I might add, was... Um, to paint the race from the back of the motorcycle. Now, could you imagine me doing this while weaving and turning or in this race shaking over the cobbles? So 
I wasn't, we weren't able to make even getting me to the races to paint live on site. Um, we weren't able to make that happen, but it was sort of funny. The story was the guy I was working with, who was trying to make that happen for me to be at the races was told by the Italian organizers, look, there are people, photographers who've been waiting a lifetime, a career to get onto a motorcycle because that's where they're going to get the good pictures. You know, it's, um, if you're in the middle of the race, which is why I wanted to do it too. If you're in the middle of the race, you actually have the opportunity to capture those moments right in it. Whereas if you're only at the finish line or the start or whatnot, your opportunities to photograph the race are much more limited. So he was told if your guy gets on, you know, gets a ride, gets on a motorcycle, there are people who will, <laughs> how was it put, take it from him, in essence. <laughs> they will make sure he doesn't stay on the motorcycle. And I was kind of like, yeah, we're not to be, um, racist isn't quite the right word, but, um, stereotypical is we are talking about Italy in the, that case. Maybe I should uh, not tempt fate. Let's put it that way. So the guy in the front, movie star rider, is one of the Americans in the race. Um, actually, one of the people he's chasing is another one of the Americans in the race. So this is Matteo Jorgensen, with a name like that, you wouldn't think he was an American, but he is. Riding on a Spanish team. Up the road is Nielsen Powers, who actually does ride on an American team. So hopefully these two will be able to, at least they're hoping they'll be able to get across. So I haven't sort of talked about, you know, the watercolor part of this. And part of the reason why I love using the watercolors to do this is that it's more fluid, literally, as well as, um, when I do my large scale work, and you know, I've, I've definitely on this channel have showed a lot of my paint stick work. You, um, where the painting starts and stops is fairly specific. You know, well, the object, the edge, you don't have this blurring. And the cycling allows, not only allows, requires this in sense of movement. And the watercolors, in my humble opinion, help show that sense of movement and speed. So now I've got these little puddles of water from where I picked up the brush. So you notice what I did is like move it and then wipe it off on the paper towel. And I'm also working, again, light to cool. Here, my image just stopped. So going light to cool, light to dark. Well, warm to cool, light to dark. I think I'm gonna go ahead and lay in the road surface. And again, with this, you want your brush strokes to help inform you know it's a roadway and you see how I just actually in that case just picked up water 
so that when you if the brush strokes show you they're helping to inform because they will show they help give a further sense of that action like I was talking about that sense of motion And also, you know, they're both wearing white helmets, so the white helmet is left. It's just the paper. And, you know, that edge doesn't bother me. So these are kind of the things with the watercolors that you have to control. You have to sort of plan, might be, have to allow for. How about that word? You have to know that you're going to have areas of white and therefore control your color application. This brown that I've mixed is too wet, <laughs> meaning the, you know, the color to pigment ratio is off. So I'm mixing it again so I can have less water. Now hopefully I've gotten that water off. Yeah, there we go. See how much better that was, how much darker. It's not as pastel. I used to love their jersey a lot more than I like it now. <laughs> But they had a La Mondiale, so it was AG2R La Mondiale before Citron took it over and they had this lovely little, either it was different sleeve colors or hatch marks. If you look back through the old work, you can see what I'm talking about. But anyway, so this is the piece, time to remind you to, if you like what you're watching, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe so you can see more when they become available. I'll be painting the women later today or tomorrow. So that would be the next thing. And then after that, we will go to one of my all-time favorites, Perry Roubaix. But thanks for taking the time to watch. Of course, all this work will be available to purchase through my website at gregleach.com. Easiest way to find him is go to the blog theartofcycling.blogspot.com and each post will be of the painting and the painting I'll talk more about what's happening in the painting and you'll be able to click straight through to the purchase part of the um, website but again thank you paint what you know and I know cycling both to do it to ride I raced way back when only amateur and uh, so paint what you know and hopefully know what you paint and have fun with it. Thank you all.